Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already clicked subscribe, go ahead and click that button right now. So today I want to tell you that I talked to three wedding planners and all of them told me that I cannot keep my wedding under 25k. So I said, screw the wedding planner, let me figure this out on my own. And here's exactly how I did it. I'm going to dive straight into this and basically tell you exactly how much everything costs and what the total cost was and how you can do it too. So I hope you learned something from this. So we had three events at our wedding. We had the Haldi or the Holud, we had the Nika, and then we also had the reception. Um, all these events were pretty much um, spread apart because we didn't have a lump sum of money at all at the same time, but we made it happen. So the first event was the Holud or the Haldi. We had about 20 guests attend, so we kept all of our events very intimate. We really wanted to make sure that our invitations were very intentional and only invited people that we really genuinely wanted to come. That being said, the Haldi event was with just 20 people and we did it at my in-laws house so there wasn't any venue cost to it. The food was about 300. Uh, some of it was catered and some of it was homemade. The decorations, we got a lot of info on TikTok. Basically all the materials that we bought we DIY and it was le about less than $300. My outfit, which was a shari, was uh, $50, and Samil's outfit, which was a kurta, was $75. The photographer um, was about $920 for the day for about four hours of coverage. And so the total for just the haldi was $1,620. Awesome. Next event was the nika. Again, for the venue, we used our, our home, our, uh, a home that we invested a lot of money and time in. So technically, I'll say that the venue was free, even though we do pay a mortgage on that. The decor, um, we actually, uh, the people that we hired, they charged $400 for a really nice backdrop in our living room. Amazing price, a steal, a steal of a price. And then we spent about $200 extra on just ordering some from Amazon and decorating with the rest of the house. The decor itself was about $600. Food, uh, it was for about 25 to 40 people. Uh, some of it was homemade again, some of it was catered again. That was roughly $600, so not bad at all. Okay, now moving on to outfits. So my outfit for my nikah, it was a very beautiful gown from Bangladesh. It was $450. And then my husband's um, whole fit, his kurta and everything, and his hat and shoes was also around $460. So not too bad on the outfits. Hair and makeup for that day was a whopping $400. Again, that's something that I definitely wanted to spend money on. And photographer was $920. So that total for that day was $3,030. So the total cost for those two days was $4,650. Mind you, we also like to count in the um, gifts that we get. So we got roughly $2,500 in gifts from our family and friends, which was very, very, very kind and generous of them. We were able to take that money and pay off anything that we've, we'd spent. And um, we were very fortunate that our families were also able to pitch in for these um, house events because they knew that we were going to pay for the reception ourselves. Um, and so the total cost for those two days was about $21.50. And again, our parents helped a lot with those events. Next up, we got the reception. So this is where the bulk of our money went into. And Samil and I, we spent a lot of time saving up and really just being able to because we really wanted to not really receive any help and just pay this ourselves so for the reception let's start with my outfit my outfit including all the accessories and everything included was 1025 dollars and everything that i got was from bangladesh that's why i got it with such a steal of a price my husband's tux um, i couldn't really get that overseas so that was roughly 1100 dollars with all its accessories the biggest chunk of what our money went to was the venue and we got really lucky because our venue came with the food and we did Indian catering so the, the venue came with food, it came with tables, chairs, covers, a basic centerpiece and just a like basic decor as well. So all together the venue was $17,300. Woo! That's tough to say. And we paid for about 105 people and 94 people showed up. The venue did not come with dessert and luckily my mom actually makes desserts. She has a business so she luckily was able to um, make the desserts at home. So to feed about 100 people, the desserts cost only $650 which is amazing. So for that day, our venue did come with a DJ but we didn't want the DJ that came with the venue so we went ahead and found a Desi DJ. He was $2,500 which again was such a steal because he's so talented. Um, and lastly, our decor was about $3,000.
we decided to do a little bit more extravagant decor than what the venue was giving to us. Um, just because, you know, I wanted a touch of me. And so, again, that was $3,000. Hair and makeup for that day was $450. We skipped getting any sort of extra flowers or anything like that. The worst part about my wedding day, you know, because everything goes wrong, was our videographer had the wrong date written down. So he, um, they, they didn't show up. Um, so in which we got $2,000 reimbursed the day after. So, wah wah. But hey, that helped us, I guess, save $2,000. So total for the reception was $24,725, which is absolutely amazing and exactly within our budget. Now, if I add all three uh, events together, our cost was $29,375. And we were really fortunate that our first two events could happen in our homes and our families did a lot of the cooking. So luckily they were able to foot most of that bill. So uh, what me and Samil were really had to pay for was the reception itself, which again, we are so immensely, immensely lucky that our families could do that and provide that for us. And we are so blessed. But there is something that people don't tell you about weddings is that a life hack for us was that for our wedding gifts, we asked everybody to only give us money. And we didn't want any really box gifts or anything like that. So we had a honeymoon fund set up online that people could put money into. And because of that, we were able to get $10,800 in wedding gifts. Um, we used about a quarter of that to just pay off the wedding. So we had roughly about eight grand saved up for a honeymoon, which is amazing. Cannot wait to talk to y'all about that. Um, so there you go, guys. This is my pay transparency for my three event Indian Bengali fusion wedding. If you want to know more about my vendors or if you want to know more about the details of my wedding, please leave a comment below and I'll be able to answer in the next video. Again, don't forget to subscribe so I can keep making these videos for y'all. Bye.